because I was uh, at one time the IRA's m m most hated person and on the top of their most wanted list. They tried multiple times to kill me. Multiple times, parties, you, you name it. Yes, we, we mean, drank, drank, we meant anything. We, uh, the, so the only thing we couldn't do was go home at night. They beat the fuck clean out of us, the screws. The Protestant screws, Catholic screws? The, 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 Doesn't no, matter. The, 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 the screws were mostly Protestants, but they beat the fuck out of us. They were bastards, they were. And they would blackmail you, they would try to recruit you, which they'd done with me several times. What, offering you money? I've come in with the money, a suitcase full of money. So there was a bomb put, the, a bomb threw up my house, a bomb threw up my car. My car was riddled with a fucking AK-47. He must have assumed that the first three shots had hit me in the head, and then my body had dropped. Okay. But I was on this steering wheel, Tom, I, <laughs> but he thought I was dead. Information covered up, censorship, corruption. The mainstream media have proven itself to be untrustworthy. I'm here to give a platform for debate, for truth, for open discussion. I'm introducing you to my podcast, Silenced with Tommy Robinson. Who exactly is Tommy Robinson or Stephen Yaxley Lane? With the English Defence League, the EDL. Robinson has a long watching. The problem is with Islamic way. The English far right Islamophobic activist. Since then, there's been organised protests across the country in London, Manchester, Leeds. People in their thousands are marching for what's There is no such thing in this country as a Muslim free. Robinson. Johnny Adair, better known as Mad Dog Adair, was an Ulster loyalist and the former leader of the C Company of the Ulster Freedom Fighters. Johnny was born into an Ulster Protestant loyalist family and raised in Belfast. He grew up on the Old Lodge Road, a now mostly demolished road linking the Lower Shankill Road to the Lower Old Park area the site of many sectarian clashes and riots during the Troubles. Spending his teenage years on the streets fighting, he has served several prison sentences and has had attempts on his life. A past that has shaped the man I welcome onto my podcast today. Welcome to my latest edition of my podcast, Silenced. Sometimes I end up feeling sorry for myself. Sometimes I end up feeling like the world's out to get me, people are out to get me, and that I'm in a, a bad place. And then in future... I picked up the next guest's book and started looking into his life. And I realized I ain't been through shit in comparison. So my next guest is Johnny Mad Dog Adair. Johnny, thank you for joining Tommy, me. It's a pleasure thank to you, be man. here and it's a, um, <laughs> delighted to be in your company. No, thank you. Um, yeah, I want to get into, you've lived a crazy life, Johnny. A very, a very mad life. Well, I was born and bred in Belfast um, and shortly after when I was about nine or 10, the troubles broke out, which is what you just would have heard of over here. Um, Protestants and Catholics, Republicans and Loyalists, and uh, it went on for years, for, for years and years and years. And it was a blood, 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 bloody conflict where almost 5,000 people lost their lives. Catholics, Protestants, soldiers, policemen, prison officers, until it ended almost 20 years ago when the Good Friday Agreement came about. And uh, now, <clears throat> thankfully, there's peace over there. It's an un uneasy peace, but it's peace. People's not being killed or no bombs are going off. How, how old was you, Johnny, when the troubles broke out? I was, when the troubles broke out, I was about nine or 10. So <laughs> even at that age, at a young age, and that's the way Belfast was, I was involved in the street violence because that's what it was. It was like, it was just every day, almost every day in life, you had the, 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 the two communities battling with each other, street riots. Can you remember what life was like before that 1969? Well, before that, yes, my friends were Catholics. We lived, some of them were Catholics. We lived side by side. We were young kids and, and everyone lived together over there. there. There was no trouble and there was no, no hatred because they all lived together. And then when the troubles broke out in 1969, the two, the Catholics and Protestants had to separate from the communities that they were living in. And they were forced out. Protestants forced Catholics out and Catholics forced Protestants out. And then for, for thereafter, we just all lived segregated in different areas. What ignited that? What changed at that moment? It was the civil rights where the Catholics believed that they were second class citizens and they believed that the Protestant loyalists dominated it. But that was not the case. But I think it was just a, a, an excuse to get the, 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 uh, 
what they would deem as a United Ireland. Remember, we lived in Northern Ireland, which is Ulster, which is part of the United Kingdom. And that's what we were fighting for. That's what we took up arms for, to defend our union. Whereas the Republicans wanted that. The six counties, they wanted that to be all as one. So um, but Republicans wanted a, a Republicans United Ireland. Wanted a United Ireland. And how would you describe a loyalist? So for people who, what would the loyalists were wanting? Well, 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 we were defending it because we seen ourselves, we, we're, we're, we're British citizens, right? And the IRA, in my opinion, was killing and destroying everything British, i.e. they were killing Protestants, they were killing British soldiers, they were killing IEC men. So it was everything British. You know I mean, that's what they were killing. We were Protestants. We were British. They were trying to kill us. So we had the, uh, we, we didn't believe that the security forces, the soldiers and, and the police were doing enough to prevent this from happening. So that's where the loyalist paramilitaries emerged huh. as, a, as a defensive force. How, how many attacks? Was that an instant thing? So you had the IRA. And the IRA were targeting the British. They're talk, targeting the military. They're, ta they're, they're planting bombs. They're killing soldiers. How many attacks were there before British men started forming their own paramilitaries to combat this? Well, was it, was uh, it an overnight thing? Was it uh, not an overnight? Yes, an overnight thing. It started off with vigilante groups where ordinary men, like people like our fathers, and and and, and would, would have defended their own communities and the, 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 they called themselves vigilantes, where they put bar barricades up in their streets to prevent Catholics from coming in, because that's the way it eventually turned out. It was like mob rule. Hundreds of Catholics would come in their Protestant area smash and up. try and smash all the houses up and face versa. So after the vigilantes, I think they lasted for about six months or a year. And then born from the vigilantes became the loyalist paramilitaries, the UVF and the UDA. And then because the IRA was already formed and the IRA was behind all what was going on. So okay. the, the, the men at the time and the, 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 our fathers and f at the time realize that they would have to do something to deface the IRA with what they're doing. And that's where the part that where the UVF and UDA was born out of. And this for you started when you were nine or ten then, nineteen sixty nine. Yep. How quickly, because you ended up rising through the yep. ranks to become yep. one you're probably the most yep. famous face of a of well, the paramilitaries. Uh, in my young in my teenage years it was um you, you you were too young to join the paramilitaries. So we were engaged in street pals with Catholics. That's the way it was. The way over here, when you you, you, you kids were probably going to a park and playing football and playing in the swings, we were out in the street throwing bottles and petrol bombs at the at the different at the, at the Catholics and vice versa. And this is what we were doing at a young age. And then when we became teenagers, that's when we joined the paramilitaries because it wasn't throwing stones in. It was you're going to take the arms up against the, your enemies who's trying to, to, to destroy us and erase us. And and that's when we became involved when we were teenagers. And as a teenager, what was what was that like then? Living living where you lived, what did you live in Shankill? Right? Yeah, he was living in Shankill as a teenager. Even for your mum and dad, I always think of people's mum and dads. I always do this because yeah. I think of what my mum and dad have gone through, even with me. Yeah. So it, what, what was it like for your mum and dad growing up? You as a young kid, if you're out in the streets, you're getting involved. What, what you see, well, everyone done it, so it became normal. If that was to happen in Nantes, you would go out and chastise your kid. But this was a normal reality because it was like it was like civil war. Bow. And this is what we all had a fear of. We had a fear of the Catholics are coming in to kill us all. Yeah. And they equally had the same fear. So in them days, your parents, wouldn't have, if you were throwing stones and battles, that was a normal thing to do. Yeah. Not just me and my friends, but the whole Everyone. communities. It was like fight for survival. Okay. And your your parents, the, 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 the parents were in the middle of it too. That's the way it was. It was a dangerous, dangerous, violent place. Was you an, was you an only child, Johnny? Pardon? Was you an only child? No, I had, uh, there was nine of us in the family. I had five sisters and one brother. Okay, wow. Yep. Did, but I, I was the only one that became involved with a, with a part of the Okay. And. Why do you think that was? Well, it was because, it was, it was, it was a defense of my country and a defense of my community. And why, it, why, what I mean is, why do you think? Oh, why, why do I think? Uh, why do you think your brothers and sisters? Oh, sorry. Well, because my mother and father, they, they, there was not a political bone in their body. My father was a clean living man. He never smoked. He never drank. He worked all his life. And he actually had Catholic friends. I read this. He, he had Catholic friends. Yeah. And he he would have been against all this. Okay. My mother, she would just, they, they, they weren't politically, they, they, only when it came to her doorstep, because we lived close to peace lines. And then Catholics would have come in and smashed 
your windows and your cars up and and obviously your mother would come out and it would be the same. She would be shouting at them. And so that'd be a regular occurrence? Would that be a Absolutely. regular occurrence? Even right. for mums, yep, your yep, house is yep, coming yep. under attack. That, see, was it, what, you needed as much support as you could because it was more brutal. It wasn't just a, a bunch of, of, of young lads standing at the corner having a wee rap with Catholics. There was hundreds, and I'm talking about the 70s, yes. as soon as the troubles just kicked off, 69, yeah. 70, 71, 72, 73. Nor Northern Ireland and parts of it was a battleground on a daily basis with petrol bombs and stones and, and balls. And then the guns came out and the bombs. And then the IRA got, they, they, they just became the dominant force where they, 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 blew this, they just blew the country to pieces on a daily basis. Not every now and again, on a daily basis. Well, daily more, bombings, daily murders. Every single day in life. You turned on the news in the morning, a policeman had been shot dead, two policemen, soldiers had blew up, Protestant had been shot dead, or vice versa, Catholic man shot dead. Or, but that's just the way it was. That was normal in Belfast. Very, very, very dangerous. And I guess when you think about it, because how is it when someone becomes so divided and it gets ingrained, I guess if it's happening daily, yep. communities are affected daily. People yep. you know are affected yep. daily. So then, then the hatred on either that's side. Where the, that's where the hatred comes from because you're, you're segregated. Once we live together and then overnight... Just overnight, hundreds of Catholics were burnt out. Hundreds of Protestants were burnt out. They had to go to safe Catholic areas and we had to come to the safe Protestant areas. So you have a hatred of your enemy. They're like, they're, they're, they're in one section of the, of the area and you're in another section area. And there's peace lines and barriers that separate us. So the came to stage where we had no contact with Catholics. You would only seen them on the Which battlefield. Is it's easier than to hate. The hatred was there because you, you you knew that the Catholics, although the IRA was killing us, but we knew that the IRA was could only be successful with the support of the Catholic community. Mm -hmm. So that's where our hatred came. Because if the Catholic community didn't want this to happen, surely it they would have turned they wouldn't have supported the IRA the way they did for such a long period of time. So would you say it was a para paramilitary versus paramilitary? Or would you say it was just Catholics versus Protestants? To be honest with you, I'll be brutally honest, it was Catholic against Protestant. Yeah. That's the way it was. Although the IRA and the Lord's Paramilitaries would have been specific in their attacks. Like, uh, for example, the IRA would have been specifically targeting RUC as police officers or members of the British Army. But again, everything, it was their justification. It was just to erase everything Britishness and their justification. He's a British soldier, kill him. He's a policeman. He's kill him, yeah. and the Protestants, they, 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 they killed the ordinary innocent Protestants too. And sadly and regrettably, that happened. That was a two-tier approach. There was multiple massacres of innocent, uh, innocent civilians, both Protestants and Catholics. See, it's, it's like, so if I think of my childhood, I think of playing football, I think of growing up. But I guess every child, everyone who grew up in these areas in Northern Ireland, their childhood... Is, yeah. is this see, conflict? As a child, we 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 were grew up with a fear of Catholics because mm. these Catholics are trying to kill us. As a young kid, I and mean, when you see, I and mean, when you're involved in what was going on in the streets, you uh, uh, they're going to kill us. So, and there will come a day they probably will kill us, and they will get their own way because they had this. We had this fear that they wanted this United Ireland, they and they're going to fight and die to get it. Which the war doing? And we felt we were on the receiving end of this because the security forces, they were, they were effective, but they weren't 100% effective where we could live safely and peacefully and get on with our everyday life, which we couldn't do. So that hatred not just came from us against the professional IRA and other Republican groups, but against the whole entire Catholic community because they supported the Republican groups. So, and what, what age was you then when you went from throwing bottles, throwing, throwing rocks? We, to join in a, a paramilitary organisation? I was about 18, 18, 18 years of age. And which organisation did you join? It was the Ulster Defence Association, which at the time was legal. Did they you were did? legal. And they, they weren't outlawed, they weren't bond or subscribed until I think it was 1991, 92. I became a member of that organisation. Um, and then as the years went on in that organisation in the mid-80s, the, the mid then I became an active member a member of the Ulster Freedom Fighters, which was the military wing of the Ulster Defence Association, which was legal at the time, but the Ulster Freedom Fighters were illegal. Like Sinn Féin in the IRA? Yep, exactly. 
So that, that was a military wing of the UDA that was involved in military operations against Republicans. And when you joined that, you was how old? So you went from 18 when you joined I, the military? I would, have jo I would have joined the military sh sh not shortly after I joined the, U the, 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 the ordinary, the, the UDA, because I wanted to do something more than throwing fight. battles and bricks. I wanted to do, because again, and it was the time, if you can remember the hunger strikers in 1980 and, and the early 80s. Bobby were, 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 Yep, yep, yep. Where 10 hunger strikers died on, on 10 IRA prisoners, that are Republican prisoners died on hunger strike. And this, every time one of them had died, the violence in the street increased and it was, this was going, and it was frightening for the Protestant people. Because the Catholics were getting riled up. It was just, it was just mayhem. And it was frightening. And so that's where we needed to be seen to be doing something to try and do something against the IRA. And the only way we could do that, which was more effective than throwing stones and paddle bombs, would be to take up the arm and to go take on the IRA, to yep. take them head on. Yep. That, well, th that's what we tried to do. And I think as, as times, as, as life went on, well, when we got more stronger and more experienced, I think my company in particular, I think, which is Saxon it's Battalion C, C Company. company. I think we've done a very effective job against the, the members of Sinn Féin and the IRA. What, what, you know, when you say you join a you join a paramilitary military wing, what does that involve day to day? Is it, is it day to day? Is it like a full time job? Well, is it, well, are you having meetings? Uh, are you making plans? Are you well? F speaking for myself, it was a full time job. It was like a full time job for me, twenty four hours a day sometimes, because I never stopped. Because I knew that the IRA don't stop, so I'm not going to have a dig at them and then go and take a break. I need to keep to going after these people, pressure. keep going after them. Because if I can put, if we, not me, if we can put pressure on these people, they're going to start thinking that they're not getting away with what they're doing lately. They're not going to shoot soldiers and policemen and Protestants and nobody's coming after them. When they were doing that, it was coming after them. We were going after their top men. And their when tops. you say going after them, what do you mean? What do you mean? Targeting them. Take, e take, executions. Take, yeah, well, Bombs. yeah, uh, yeah. Bombs, everything. Yeah, yeah, everything. What they were doing to us, we were doing back. And they didn't they they did they, they didn't like that. Because here we were going and then to, that, but then that must make that must make because obviously when they're at war with the government, they're at war with the government. They're at war with British police, they're at war with British Army. Yeah. Now they're at war with the people. So anyone who's standing up, like yourself, yep. well, well, they're well, gonna want to finish you as well. But that came at a high price for me. Because I was, uh, at one time, the IRA's m m most hated person and on the top of their most wanted list. I can remember, when I, was, I remember when I was a kid seeing the videos of you standing outside with crowds behind you. Yep, yep, I can remember yep. what you see, the IRA, because I was a factive and they, through time, realised who I was and what I was all about and then they believed that I'm behind all this. We need, to, we, we need to stop this man. And they tried multiple times to kill me. Multiple times. How many, ta uh, how, how many, so you, as C Company, how many sort of, when you led it, yeah. how many men were there in it? And well, how many attacks C did you company, say? There would have been hundreds of men in C Company, but the military wing, which was more important, yeah. which was the Ulster Freedom Fighters. Okay. There, would, there would have been maybe a couple of dozen of us, okay. but they were all, uh, with respect to each and every one of them, they were all dedicated loyalist Ulster men. And, the, and, 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 and they you? never ever questioned orders they gave. They were committed to that badge and they were committed to the defense of Ulster. And then they were, they were, they were very courageous, brave young men. Who makes the decision on what you're attacking and who you're attacking? Well, it's, it's, it's a collected decision. It's so, made up. You, you have the brigadier, you have the military commander, and he will sit down and with his volunteers and they will select the target and uh, they'll, they'll target him and then they'll, they'll, they'll go after him. How do you, how do you, are you seeing if, if you're in that position, how do you know who to trust in that position? Well, it, yeah, well, this is, this is a million dollar question. You yeah, don't, that must be, you don't. Must be and I learned, I learned now and I've learned that you can trust no one. Because even the IRA, uh, uh, no, no, no. Many of listen, the IRA's lead members were listen, working for the British. At, 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 all paramilitary organisations are infested with informers and rats. Yeah. And I don't mean rats in the ground. I mean human being rats who would sell their sell comrades. For money. They keep themselves out of jail and for money. So yes, you're right. That 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 that, that, that you, you, you don't know. At one time, I believed that if a man had been personally involved in pulling the trigger. I would never have suspected him of being an informer because he pulled. I didn't but think that you would be allowed to but work for the special branch if you took another person's life. But I got that one wrong. Because now, and I have learned that it was some of the ones who were maybe a wee bit very active. They were the ones that 
to surprise me that turned out to be rats informers. So people understand agents. that. So people understand that the British government allowed informers the British, to kill. British government did to a certain extent, yes, turned a blind eye to the informers. They were willing to get someone who was maybe killing people. To rise up. So he was trusted and he would know the inner workings of the organization. And this is what the special branch needed to know. What's he doing? What's his thinking? And no better person to do that than somebody who, that I would maybe have behind me who thinks a good man, who's maybe done a few hits. few hits. But I got that wrong. And the good thing, I learned from that, from 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 the Good Friday Agreement and the police ombudsman and the, the, where, the, where they investigated collusion and, and, and unearthed informers within loyalist paramilitaries and Republican paramilitaries. And that's the mistake I made by trusting someone who had been directly involved in, in, in a shooting. I, I didn't believe that they could be the police would, would allow them to work, but they did. And that's where I found that most, a, a lot of them came from. They were Again, the ones so to watch. I don't want to try and draw a comparison because my life has been nothing like that, but everyone who's been close to me has turned on me. So when, well, I have a trust issue, but I'm thinking you're running a power Absolutely. I, look, There's look, a wall. Look, I'm going to tell you something. Yes, you're absolutely right, Tommy. Now, I'm, I was dedicated and committed, and I loved C Company, but I hated the IRA and all things Republican. Now, every time people would think you hated the IRA that much, yes, but the IRA was not my number one target. And first, my, on top of my agenda when I came out of my house every day was the, the enemy within, not the IRA, it was the enemy within. And what I mean by that, I was thinking and guessing and setting traps to, I wonder is he working for the special branch? I wonder is he working for MI5? Even some of my closest comrades, that's where I was. My priority was informers. And then secondly, go after the IRA because it's the informers that's bringing you down. We know where the IRA is coming from. We know what the IRA is going to do, but you don't know what your so-called comrades is passing on information. And that, 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 that's the thing, Tommy, you'll never know. And it's and hard. Is that draining? Is that not draining daily to know looking at? Absolutely. Because I, I get paranoid. Y yes, you're yeah. right. But the message to that and the answer to that, Tommy, yeah. destroy them. Execute them if you if you find out who they are. Execute them and send a powerful message. That's my opinion. Is that what, is that what happened within the? Well, uh, uh, it, ha it has happened a few times. Yes, mm. the IRA were great at it. They yeah. humiliated them. They took them away. They tortured, tortured them. them. They stripped them naked. They the, 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 the shot them in the head. And threw them on the country road. And that that's what they deserve because an informer is an informer is the worst thing. It's worse than own. cancer. Yeah. Because here you have people who are so-called your comrades and, the, and, and a loyalist power military group and fighting the enemy who's destroying and murdering and slaughtering our people. But yet of all, these rats are going secretly, meeting special branch, getting money and passing on information on men that's out risking their life and, and their freedom. Them. Endangering those men. Uh, yep, absolutely. So that I, I, I've, 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 I've profound hatred for informers. A profound hatred for them. Have you ever had accusations? You see, because even you hear about informers, say like now that, uh, I don't know if you've been watching them, what goes on in America with the Proud Boys. Yeah. I saw um, one of the main leaders, they come out and leak that he was an informant. Yeah. But how do you not, I always look and think, well, well they're going to throw these accusations because well, it's a mind war, it's a well, mind battle as well. Well, 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 it could be black propaganda, but like, you got to remember the British intelligence is one of the best intelligence agencies in the world. The MI5 especially, they're good at their job. And what they do, I wasn't worried about the wee 20 pound a week informant. That's the wee guy sitting in the pub who overhears things about and passes them on. The, the MI5 and special branch went to the top. It's the top they want. Because if they wanted to stop this war, they, the wee 20 pound a week mom wasn't going to give the information that would... That would they would need as the top. And that's where most of, sadly, and most of the informers within the three groupings over there all came from the highest tier, the highest, the highest ranking members that you could get in the IRA, the UVF, it's and the UDA. They were informers. And they're meant to be fighting and, for their and, cause. And this has been made public. This oh, no. isn't just me saying this. No, no, and no. I'm not just talking about my reign. I'm talking about from start to finish. And that's the way it is. And that's 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 what that's what the special branch and MI5 and British government do. That they, they do try how, to recruit people. Do you know how they recruited them? Was it was it fair recruitment? Well, at the, was it, it money? Was it blackmail? Was it look, my, my experience? I would always be wary of somebody that didn't like jail. People who are scared of jail, always wanting to cause trouble, fight, protest in jail. I would be weary of them. Then I got this stage where you, 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 you just, you set wee traps. And then, but over there, in my opinion, 
it's acceptable, and I'm, maybe I'm wrong, but I've experienced, and I was uh, the nerve center of, of, of what went on for a long, long time. But in my experience, I would have dealt differently with informers. But my experience, it's acceptable. But the, the, the reason I learned why would it be acceptable with certain men, because these certain men are informers themselves. So they're not going to want to take, execute an informer when themselves, they know they're informers. So mm. I, I, I just, it was at the highest of the highest level. I'm not just talking about, I'm talking about the IRA. You look at Freddie Scott, a teacher, steak knife. He's now dead. You don't get much higher than him. And then there's been when loyalists. When he was working for the British. There's been so, yep, yep, yep. There, uh, IRA too. And yeah. you have so-called loyalists at the highest level of the organizations who've been publicly, publicly named as informers. Yeah. And n there's nothing done about it. But I would deal with that differently. And I'll not say on camera what I would do. Yeah. And I've no shame or no regret about doing it yeah. because the, 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 that is the enemy. That is the yeah, yeah. real enemy. Yeah, it's like even when we hear about this Russian attack on the Scotland. What Putin, like, no, not many people like Russians, but that's why I admire, I admire Putin. Well, because the he, do, he doesn't it forget his anyway. informers. It he, killed, yeah. he comes after them. 100%. Uh, I said that when everyone's like, well, he's killed uh, uh, this bloke. Uh, I said, well, the bloke deserved to die. That's why I like Putin. Yeah. He doesn't forget his fucking, uh, 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 his backstabbers or, or his, yeah, or his agent provocateurs. He, he's, he's gone. he goes off them yeah. and he sends that message. And for yeah. a play them for that. What about, um, so C Company, how many attacks would you say? Well, under under my under my leadership? command, and I was in command for, for, for years. How many hundreds years of attacks. Hundreds and hundreds of attacks. Are we talking... Um, am I right that you fight that rockets were fired at Sinn Fein? Rocket offices, RPG sevens, AK forty sevens. With uh, C Company would have attacked Sinn Fein offices, Sinn Fein headquarters, Sinn Fein members. Jerry Adams that attacked his house, mm -hmm. that have shot Sinn Fein members, that have shot IRA members. Uh, I well, hundreds of attacks. C Company was involved in hundreds. Can I ask where to where does the when this war was going on, yeah. where's the funding come from for the weapons for these attacks? Well, I'll be brutally honest. It came from uh, illegal activities like like extortion okay. and armed robberies. Extortion of businesses. And, and, and I'm being brutally honest. I'm being brutally honest. In some cases, drugs. And I got, Even back then? Even back then. Because I thought there was like a zero the Cannabis. There was, but cannabis, when the time it was cannabis. Okay. And that because... Things like that had to be like weapons and munitions and explosives and that didn't come that that that, that didn't come free. These had to be procured and they had to and you I believe I, you would have to pay big big money. You'd probably pay more money than procuring the weapons than you probably would as paying for the actual weapons themselves. Where would these weapons? I know I know during the conflict the IRA were funded a lot of the time by Gaddafi. Uh, well, given weapons sadly, by many nations. Sadly, we, and regrettably, we didn't have that support. No, that's what I mean. We had support in England. Did the I British government? Did the British I had contacts in London, right? Yep. Um, good, brilliant support in Scotland. Yep. But other than that, nothing. In 1987, there was a shipment, and it was, the, I believe, the only shipment that Loyalist Power Militaries had, and it came from South Africa, and that's where the heavy weapons came within, and we desperately needed them. Because the weaponry that the IRA had and the explosive was it was phenomenal. Well, unlimited funding from Islamic but, nations, but they had support from America. They, they, America, I mean, their propagate, propaganda war machine was, was was second to none. So they had support, and they had, they had the best of weapons. Whereas we we only became came across good weapons in 1987, and it was AK uh, AK 47s, um, grenades, and pistols, and RPGs. Uh, RPG seven rocket launchers, and that we used them. That the deadly effect, and they, they, I've, I've quoted this before, saying this, when we got them weapons, and sadly, most of them were caught before they let them get into the country. But again, this is where the informers from the top. In. Then the, the police didn't just stop them cars and seize more, all them weapons. The people at the top who were aware of it let them have some of them exactly. And that's, but, but some of the weapons got through and that's where we, where, where the Lawless uh, Sack C Company was able to get their hands on some of them and used them to effect. And then went to war properly. Yep. But again, the IRA was still outnumbered when it came to weapons and explosives and the experience they had. And sadly, Lawless did not really have the expertise until near the end of the conflict of, of, of explosives. And it's my understanding, they came across some plastic explosive then and it was used again the, 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 the deadly effect in some cases. What about, what's your view as an enemy of the IRA? What was your view of, of the IRA 
as an army? Well, to be honest, Tommy, and to, to answer your question honestly, I grudgingly respected the IRA. Grudgingly respected them. Because they I've were seen them described as the best guerrilla warfare yeah. army there's ever been. And the war. That's a fact. And I'm not I'm not I'm not scared to say that. I'm not telling a lie. Of course they were. Their, 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 their bomb making technology was was a step ahead of the British Army. They had that the British Army tried to keep a step ahead of them. The area was always a, a step ahead of them. Did you did you uh, did you ever evaluate or look at what they were arguing? For? Well, I'll tell you something, and this is again, mm. and I'm that this is even the hunger strikers. I grudge you respect them, man. There was ten IRA men. I don't who know starved the line. Them, Everyone knows Bobby Sands. St yeah, starved themselves to death for a political cause. That's a dedication. Right, dedication to highest mm. level. Now I'm dedicated, and I knew that uh, one day. Uh, I, I could lose my life. The IRA will get me one day. But I accepted that because I didn't know what day it would be. So it was coming out of the blue for me. But these hunger they strikers, coming to the end of these the hunger strikers stirred death and uh, they, they, that death was stirring them in the face for 60 odd days. And so they didn't fall. If, if, if I was asked to give my life on hunger strike, no, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been as brave to do that. I was willing to accept that the IRA might kill me, but I can't see it coming. They're coming up behind me, or they're really in my car. But she, that's an unexpected. But these men knew what they were doing, volunteered to die, starve themselves for a political cause. So again, I grudge any respect them, man. Do you think, because those 10 men give their lives, I don't know who the other nine are. Everyone's yep. heard of Bobby Sands. Yep. But yep. do you think in the, in the war, that was a war going on, they didn't use any weapons when they, they killed them. They, they gave their lives. Do you think that had a well, more of an effect than the terrorist attack? Well, it got them, well, it did, it did get them worldwide support. But it, Bobby, the, Bobby Sons, he was the first to die. He was the first volunteer. Then he was followed by an, an, another nine who all died. Now, that was a time when the hunger strikers were going on and when they were dying, that, that the country was in real turmoil. But the rest of the world, the, the, IRA, the IRA was created a pop propaganda and their propaganda war machine was second to none. And the support they got worldwide From for the that. British government, the way they seen it, the British government's letting these here men die. They're political prisoners and they're letting them, they're letting them die one by one. The mm -hmm. war political prisoners, we were all political prisoners, but they, they the British government tried to criminalize us and the IRA wasn't having it. That's why they wore the blankets. That's why they eventually starved themselves to death. Like and what? Well, it worked both ways. But looking back on it now, you get people going that them men give their lives for for nothing. But it, it was part of the IRA strategy, and it was, I, I believe, my opinion, it was well thought through. And obviously, these men volunteered to give up their lives, and and I had that. I grudgingly respect them for doing it. This podcast is brought to you by Urban Scoop. Any support to carry on this work will be greatly appreciated. Please visit urbanscoop.news forward slash support us. Thank you. Would you say you gave up your life? I know, I know, I know it's going to have changed since the peace, peace process, but in the years from the moment you started your activism to the moment that you, you, you led, left Northern Ireland, were you free at all? Were you constantly waiting to be killed? You, well, what was I'll like? give you an example. The peace came, right? And I was at a concert in peacetime. And I was shot in the head at the concert. And then, after that, there was other several attempts on my life. That was from loyalists, right? Tell me about the concert. And then... Yeah, go on, I'll let you finish. Well, it was my fir first parole. And at, at, at that stage, the peace was bad then, right? Mm. We, we didn't have the Good Friday Agreement exactly. But with peace, with ceasefires and all. So my wife had bought two tickets for UB40 concert, a, a band which I loved. I've loved them since I was a teenager. And I'd never got to see them because bonds like that wouldn't come to Belfast because it was a war-torn country. But then there was peace and then big bonds like that would come. So two tickets, all oh, brilliant, open our concert, we're going. But even then, my security team said, oh, you can't go up there, mate, for, come on, there's peace. They're not, they're not going to come after me now. <laughs> no one to me. me. I didn't take no security, just me and my wife. And start lovely night, lovely song. What year was concert. this? What year was this? What? What year was this? That was 19, what was that? 97, I think, or 98. How old was you then? then? Well, I was, what, four, I would have been 40 or something. 40, what, what, you just got, you gone to the music festival with your wife. Pardon? You gone to the music concert with your wife? Yep, going to the music concert with my wife. Open there, lovely sunny night. And uh, it was great. And then the band came on, you before the, the songs just going, it's, it's, everything's brilliant. And the next thing, fucking just a big flash. I initially thought it was a hand grenade. It was just the, the flash. 
when he came behind me and hit me in the head, right? Just shot me right there. And I remember slow motion and I believed. You know, you see cowboy films and all oh, You get shot, you stagger about and all, but I knew you're me, you're Dan. But I didn't want to, the mental, the man that was telling myself, don't fucking fall here because you fall. They all know you've been shot in the ball. No, it's Johnny at there. Okay. And something was telling me that in that split second. Don't drop. Don't drop. And I ended up fighting one of the ones. See, when they realized that I wasn't dead, yeah. I just turned around and I was blood everywhere. And I could see my wife in slow motion. And then and I tried to run. Right? And then they were attacking me. So I was fighting back with him because I realized I wasn't dead because he's still on his feet. Mm-hmm. And I was fighting like a fucking animal. He's been shot I, I, was, I was just fighting for survival. <laughs> but I ended up and I turned around to people who were doing security. But it turns out they were IRA men doing security. And one of them in particular, who's a well-known Republican from a Republican family in the markets area, Ash, uh, or my road. And uh, he didn't realize who it was with all the blood over my face. But when I, when I got closer, he identified who he was. He just turned and walked away. And me look a bit shot, help, help. Think he would give me an omelet or something. See what he seen through the blood. He realized it's Johnny at there. <laughs> Fuck away, man. So I run. And lucky enough, there was a car had just was given, given away. You know the way you give away at the top of the street. And it was a taxi. Well, I, did, I just opened the door, jumped in. Taxi, and he even looked at me because Catholics were petrified of me. And I didn't know at the time he was a Catholic. I said, It was a Catholic do you know taxi driver. And the reason why I knew that, because the police, when they took a statement on, they said, Johnny, do you know who saves your life? At the time you're not going to believe it. It was a Catholic, you know what I mean? <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> but he was a Catholic. And Wait, he drove you to the hospital? I, I, he took me, to, no, no, but we're going to the hospital. And I instructed him not to because I was still alive. You might get and finished I off. believed it was the IRA I had done it. And here's me, if they know that they have failed, They'll fucking crack up and they'll come to the hospital and finish me off. So we went and then we had to go to a, a hospital. My security team took me to a hospital, which was in a Protestant area, nowhere near any Catholics were. It would have been harder for the IRA to come. But and and that, and that was it. So they took the bullet lodged, hit me in the head, but it was a damp brown, and traveled right up and stayed stuck there. But that the, the they operated and took it out. And that was it. And I was only out in parole. He was only out on parole. Out on parole, aye. So, what was your wife doing? What I, again? I just she, think, what should Mrs. doing at this point? Because people think that well, she the was dog. fighting with him. Me and her was fighting with that. She was she, she she her too. Like and with respect to her, she like she was a brave woman. How long, was, she, you, how long, you, how long was you? How long you? Are you still with? I was with her. No, no, not, not with her. And I was we're great friends. She, she, okay. I've got my kids are at her and, and they're lovely kids. But Gina, Gina was a lovely woman. Like and and she had a real rough rough time. And was you with her from young? She, no, when we were together, I mean, because of my activities, my house was getting attacked. It was getting raided by the RUC, the British Army. I was getting taken away to interrogation centres. So was Gina. I mean, all these things, Gina lived through it, but she was a strong, strong She's woman. She's a ride or die. Uh, she was like, she like credit to her like, and, and at the same time, bringing up, keeping a lovely home and, and bringing up kids so as there would be... I mean, not not try to get involved because my, my kids they're not politically involved or there's not a political bone in their body. Is that because you don't want didn't want them to? Be? Oh, I wouldn't want them to be that. But but Tommy, in the areas that we come, were the areas where we came from, like the Shankle and all, it was hard not for your family members, your sons and your daughters to become involved one way or the other. Or if they don't become involved, they they grew up without hatred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we didn't realize the hatred. The, nah, it's not as bad over there now because there's peace. Catholics and Protestants get on with each other now, which is a good thing. I never came and sit in distance like, are you with a Catholic until my license was revoked when I got out of the, the maze prison and was returned. The maze was closed at that time. So they had to put me till an, or, an ordinary, ordinary decent criminal prisoner, which was mixed Protestants and Catholics. And that's when I, the first time in years that I had been in the same company as Catholics. At the start, it was hard because they hated me. I was the devil to these and people. They must have been paranoid. They're not going to. They're going to try and. They do tried that. to kill me. They poisoned me. They poisoned me. Did they? What? But, with but, what? But, but, food. The, the, the NLA it was it was the NLA. The what? The Irish National a Republican group and Irish National. Republican. When they poisoned your food, they poisoned my protein drink, pro- protein powder. But it's when I got into that jail, it was mixed. And they tried to isolate me, and I wouldn't. I mean, no, no, you should revoke my license. You're putting me in the normal population. Yeah, yeah. So I went in there because I'm cocky, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> but the Catholics fucking hated me. I'll give you an example. I'm stuck, the showers were long. And say, I'm getting a shower, probably five Catholics and just me. And they're all talking to each other, not talking to me. They would have stayed uncomfortable. 
But when my personality shone through, most of the wee Catholics liked me. I went, Johnny's not this full He's monster. right. He's dead on. He's full right. He's this. Yeah. He's that. And the other. And it, and that was the first time that I became close enough to, to with Catholics after all the years of conflicts. And to be honest, they were no different than me or you. They were just Catholics. And the only difference was they were Catholic and I was a Protestant. But we got on well. And even being who I was, although some of them were assaulted by the Republicans on the outside for so being friendly with me. Because yeah. they were accusing them, doing you. They were accusing them of passing me information about Republicans, which wasn't the case. Well, when, when did you first go to jail? I know we've just spoke about this prison, but you said you was in the maze. Right, I was in the maze and I got out under a good Friday agreement. The maze right? was a paramilitary jail. Paramilitary IRA jail. And yep. British yep. paramilitary. Yes, yes, but we're, we're, sag- we're sa- separated. Yep. Right? So, and then the good Friday, the, the peace agreement came and the good Friday agreement, part of it was the prisoners would get released early. Yep. Now, I was the only person that signed the papers to get out, so they were letting me out, but then the British government stopped me from getting out, and that's never, ever happened to any prisoner. So, and I had already signed the forms, I was getting out in three weeks' time. Next thing. The, how, the, how, long, how long was the sentence you was on at this time? I got 16 years for, for directing terrorism. Right, and I'd done about what year six. Was this in? What year was, was this? That was nineteen ninety three or ninety four. Okay, so so I got uh, at about six years done, and then the Good Friday Agreement came, so we got released early. But they stopped my early release, and I swatted for about three weeks, and then there was first a decision and let me out, and then when it did let me out, I was the first prisoner released who had my license revoked and was called back to jail because they had a clause: if you get involved with paramilitary activity. Without being charged or being brought before a court, we can just bring you back to jail. And we all signed up to that. And I was the first one brought back. And then they let me out again and they brought me back again. And then they isolated me for 24 solid months. So when, when I sought it up, 16 years I got, I got out for three months and then I got out for another couple of months. I'd done almost 12 years of my 16 year t- sentence. So the, 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 peace, the, peace, the peace agreement, the agreement didn't really do me any good. It done me worse. What, what, what was it like being in the maze? Tell me about the, the maze. maze. You're in the maze. Look, look, once you get your, your, your freedom taken from me, that's bad. No matter what the jail's like, it's your freedom. That's what counts. You don't wake up beside your kids. You can't buff your kids at night. You can't do the things that normal parents do. But you're in jail. You, you don't lose that family because they come and visit you. But your comrades, you, 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 you create a bond with them, which, which become your family. And we're all in the same block together. We all look after each other and we'll have the best times. How, how many of you? Oh, she come my two wings. I had two wings of men, maybe 60, 70 men. Oh, your men but as well. All C company men, I. Okay. And, and, and we had, we had, although it was jail, but we had the best of times because you had to look out for each other. I've heard this parties. Uh, 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 parties, you, you name it. Yes, women. Drink, drink, women, anything. We, the, saw, the only thing we couldn't do was go home at night. And I mean that. So is that, it, is that, and to get to that within the prison system, to get to that, you had to be a political prison prisoner, and we were political prisoners, so we had control of our own. But then, did the, you have to intimidate the, the screws to do that? The, did you have to send well, warnings outside of prison? Did you have to well, in, well, well, I'll tell influence you, them? I'll tell you what happened. We were in an old Georgian prison, the, the um, Crumlin Road prison, and it was a fucking hellhole. You were locked 23 hours a day, and you had loyalist one cell, Republican the next cell. It was a remand, loyalist Republican. And every time, if you had seen a Republican going on a visit, you had the attack, or he would attack you. So we went through it. Was, it, was, it was a shambles. So I was only charged with my charges. I was only in for the jail three days. The next thing, we took over the jail. You, you may have seen pictures of it, and we're on the roof. And our instructions was... Are you done the protest? You, yeah, on the roof. On the roof we, we, the jail, we, okay. we, we broke through and we got claimed on the roof. Yep. Somehow managed to get on the roof. But we needed out of that jail because it was a hellhole. And we needed segregation away from Republicans. So we got on the roof and uh, our, our instructions was, we'll bring it brick by brick from the fucking slates right down to the car park. And then the screws came, they cut a deal, come down, will not harm us. And they didn't, they didn't, they didn't assault anyways. And then two nights later, we agreed to go through the walls, which were three, three foot thick. And our instructions was to get segregation. And there's a Republican next to you. And then face versa, it keeps going like that, loyalist Republican. And the instruction says, once you get through that wall, doesn't matter how long it takes, we'll all get through it. It's kill or be killed. If you get through that wall, you kill that fucking prisoner. 
and and that and then I was banging mines right, and you no, know, with the the bare end, and I remember the walls just the ends, and there was two Republicans from the markets in the next cell to me, and they were shouting through, "I'm mad dog, you simple bastard." He thought in a million years you would never get through a thief, but see, after a couple of hours. That it was becoming more and more clear that I was coming through the next thing. They were yelling, get me out of here, get me out of here. So they took all the Republicans out. And then that night, the, then the screws came in. There was me and another wee man, and they a wee UVF man, a lovely wee man. And they beat the fuck clean out of us, the screws. The Protestant crop- screws, Catholic screws? The, 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 Doesn't no, matter. The, 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 the screws were mostly Protestants, but they beat the fuck out of us. They were bastards, they were. Mm-hmm. They, they, they handcuffed my back. And, but see, before they handcuffed my, they twisted my arm so it was... There was intense pressure on my muscle. Mm-hmm. And then the fucking knocked the handcuffs. And I was like at the five o'clock in the morning, a doctor came in and I was fucking crying. And they were we mother beat the fuck out of us like. And uh was the doctor, get them fucking handcuffs off him. You see when they do, you see when they do that, did you not want to d- deal with him on the outside? Oh, the, the war dealt with him on the outside. Okay. There was prison officers killed. You okay. know, but by, by British the thing, thing what well. happened, once we got the segregation, mm-hmm. it was like heaven. The prison officers were eating out of your hand. They were calling you, sir. Can I do anything for you? Can I do? It was whereas when they were in the criminal jail, they were Nazi bastards. Okay. They were really, but they treated you like fuck me. I went down. I used to have any. Um, uh, I'm cocky, right? So I had uh, earrings and, and minerals, no two wee sleepers. And you I had one. You had what? You no know, earrings, sleepers, oh, and well, minerals. Nipple, nipple, nipple nipples. piercing, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's your mom like that, there, right? At our earrings out. So you take earrings out. So he came to that and he says, get that out. And I, I pretended there's me. I can't get it out. It's welded. And he said, it's all right. Next thing, there's me like that being cocky. No, next thing is cunt with screw. With the, the, the doctor's coat and all on the big white coat and a big hacksaw. Here's me, oh, fuck that. Oh, the cunt was going to saw it. Hear me, nah, fucking take it. But they, they were bad. But once we went to the maze, it was, the, the screws were, it was, it was brilliant. And it, so you're in the maze, you're with all your brothers in arms, your, ba- your battle brothers, your mm. comrades. And are you, when do you hear about the peace, the, 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 the Friday agreement? Wait, well, no, because we were in contact with our political party. Yep. They could come to the jail. Because there wouldn't have been a peace agreement with well, us. Because we were, we were the people in jail. We were the men that was fighting the war. So we had to agree with what, what, whatever was going on in the talks. You were doing 16 years. Was there people doing 20, we, 30s? Was there people doing longer sentences and that? Oh, that's the CC company. That's all, it was all heavy sentences. Okay. It was all, all big, 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 big sentences. So was that but, a massive... Was that a massive tool that the government had to negotiate the peace um, process. I'm, I'm, I'm important. It wouldn't, the, 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 the agreement wouldn't have happened without the that. prisoners being addressed. Okay. It w- would never have happened. Um, and how did but, it feel, I, knowing you're getting out? But, well, I, see, I wasn't selfish. I wasn't going, fuck, ah, we're, we're getting out here tomorrow. Because I wasn't long in the jail. I was caught, I, I was maybe a year in the, all the talks. Okay. But a lot of people went for a spark till them they were wanting out overnight. And they were, their heads were going, oh, when's it come on? Get this deal saying, oh, we want out. Because they knew the prisoners would have been addressed. But I knew I'm only in, so I'm not going to be selfish and say I want out right away. I'll yeah, start. And they, and they just want out. You know, when you've lived that life, I know like it's chaos, it's dangerous. Yeah. It must be a buzz as well. It oh, must getting have, out of jail? No, no. The oh. life you were living. Oh, what, what's You're leading you? a military wing oh, for yeah, a man. Yeah, yeah, but... The good thing is, when you were in jail, you remember all your comrades. There was no more guns. There was no more bombs. There was no IRA men coming off to you. There was no more checking onto your car. You were there with the men that, that you fought the war with. And they were brave men and they were courageous men. And we just had to give each other as much comfort and support as was possibly could. And we try to make life as easy. Because jail is hard when you have a family. I mean, and it's easy for maybe a single man, but yeah. again, he's lost his freedom. But when you've met, and most of, most of my, my comrades were, were married men, they were young men and they had kids and family and all. So it was hard for me trying to give them as, as much support and make them feel good because it, it, it's hard and jail's hard. And that's the price you, we paid to be in the power militaries. You can, you can either, eventually, if you get caught, you'll go to jail or worst case scenario, you could be shot fucking dead. I, I read that someone got shot dead in the prison. That's right. Which there was uh, my mate, who was a comrade, well, I would call him a comrade, the late great Billy Wright. Billy you would have heard him. Yep. He, was a, 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 he was a one-time UVF leader and then they expelled him, which was totally wrong. Well, and he him. formed his own gr- group called the Loyalist Volunteer Force. Okay. And he was like myself. What he was, what I was in Belfast, 
He was that in the country. He came from Port of Town. Okay. And he was a, one of the most active units of the UVF going. He was UVF at the time. And then they became the LVF. And Billy, like myself, the IRA had tried to kill him multiple times. The security forces harassed him down daily. And eventually, his own people backstopped him but and well, tried to force him? him out of the country. Why'd they expel him? Why? Why? Dirty tricks, British intelligence, informers at the top of the organisation. Billy was like him. myself, they couldn't buy. Couldn't but Billy wouldn't go for the 30 pieces of silver. Billy was a dedicated, committed loyalist. Yeah. And that's why I love Billy Wright. And to this day, I love Billy Wright. And he got, sh and he, he he got shot dead in the jail. How in does the that, jail. How does that and I'll tell you another story, which I agree with. Yeah. Broke my heart when it happened to Billy. And... Sadly, Michael Stone came in and told me that news that Saturday morning. Where was, was you when Billy? I lay on top of the bed and Michael Stone. You jail. know, Mike, I was in the jail, but yep. a different, different part, a different block. Yeah. They because but they, they were LVF prisoners, so they had their own blocks, and we had okay. we had our blocks. But uh, and I'm going to tell you another story about the same block where Billy was fucking with a shot. Billy, there was an informer, a rat, and this one I agree with. They were able to get him onto their wings. They conned him on. You're bro, right? No, we'll forgive you for what you've done. But he was killed in the jail. Okay. <laughs> and there was two guys charged with his murder. But they beat it. Thank, yeah. thank, thankfully, okay. they beat it. So hey, the, the rat so that, killed. But with Billy, if it's all paramilitaries. And, and this is the most secure. This is the most secure prison in, in Europe, supposedly. And if it's all loyalists, how did he get killed? Who killed him? The NLA, because the what, what they do, the, the NLA again, it was oh, it was all choreographed from the British intelligence. Billy was like me. Billy was a we need rid of that man. To, so to, to they let the Billy, they let Billy, Billy's group, which was the LVF, share a block. See, they came in each blocks, two wings here and two wings there, and then a middle bit for the screws. These two wings here were Republican prisoners, Irish National Liberation Army. And these two wings where Billy was, was Loyalist Volunteer Force. And both hadn't signed up the peace agreement. So the authorities knew what they were doing. Put them on the same block. And it's inevitable. They'll put Billy up a guilt. Okay. And if you read the, 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 the investigation that happened into it, there was feelings of uh, that, that, that there, was no, there was no prison officer in the watchtower. The cameras were cut off. Oh, multiple things. Epstein. But Billy was set up in the highest level. We all know that. We all know that. And you think they got rid of him because they thought they would have they had to get, get rid of him, him because he was against the peace process. Yeah. Billy was a genuine loyalist, a true loyalist, who seen all the wrongdoing. And Billy fought a long, hard campaign to defend our country, and he'd done an excellent job on it. And that's why they got rid of him. He got shot in jail. He got shot in the most secure jail in prison. Did anyone get uh, done for that? And in Europe. Yeah, so somebody charged it. But they got out after a couple of months on their good peace on agreement. The, pill, man. the guy, one of the guys, two of the guys had done it, were actually already doing life. So they matched. Then they got life and then they got for Billy. But the they got out a couple of months later on their good on their peace agreement. So that you, you believe. But thank, you, you thankfully, believe. the content shot him. He's now dead himself How? because nature fixed him. Because who Cancer, did? nature. Oh, okay. Nature first time. So you think... And you nature think will help. That's what I always say. Look, see, if you don't get the touch and you don't shoot them, nature will deal with the cons. And that's the, way I, that's the way I look at it. But nature dealt with him. You 100% believe then the British government had the involvement in... Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. Without a shadow of doubt. Without a shadow There was too many feelings. Too many... It uh, should never have happened. Them two groups should never have been put in the same block together. No, no. I'm right as well. Did I read that someone? But this is what the dirty tricks do. That's what they do. They, 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 Are the British the best at it? They've done it with me too, then Castle Ray, because I wouldn't take her 30 pieces of silver. What's Castle Ray? Castle Ray was an interrogation centre where they took people for the question about the terrorist offences and they took me there. Oh, I was there every other fucking week. And what happens there? Tell they take it. you in there and hold you for a week. And is that a prison? No, that's, that's you're, you're put in a prison cell, right? Yep. And it's silence. Just silence, and every minute is like an hour. Oh, yeah, nothing. and there's nobody in there. Your comrades not there. Your mummy, your daddy's not there. Your friends, there's just there, and you've bastards, cops, and they're questioning you about whatever they're questioning you about, and they're drumming you in for seven fucking days. You don't get to see a solicitor for two days, and then three days after that, and it's easy doing two, maybe two days. We see when they get an extension for a further. Seven days. That's that. That sorts of me out from the boys, and I've been run many, many seven days. And the, what they do years ago, they would have physically assaulted you, but because uh, they, they started putting cameras and all in, because yeah. people, you, the European Court of Human Rights, were saying there, this is wrong. So, what they just verbally, mentally tortured you, or tried to anyway, 
and they would blackmail you, they would try to recruit you, which they've done with me several times. What, offering you money? I came in with the money, a suitcase full of money, and then they realised, fucking, he's not interested, money's not his God. So they realised, what else does he do? You know, he likes the women. So the next thing, this, this good-looking special branch woman, and, and she tried... How long have you been in there? Five days? Yeah, go on then. <laughs> no, but no, no, but we're here. <laughs> No, so after they realised about the money, they must have went and had the wee conference and went, fucking money didn't turn him on or he wasn't interested. The way the ones before him would fucking break your arm for it. So they said, what, what's his next best thing he likes? Well, he said he likes a woman. So the next thing, I was in the, the free room and there's this girl, pair of jeans, pretty looking girl, uh, sweatshirt on. That's Johnny. Introduced herself. Like, talking away, give me a fag and all. Nicest names. Johnny, I've been on your case for a long time. I've pictures all over you everywhere. I've followed you here, there, and everywhere. Load of fucking, right? No, she wasn't tell, telling all the shit. She was telling the truth. She says, I'm, she says, I've got to like you, Johnny. Says, I'm just, I'm, there's something about you, Johnny. Could me and you meet? Fuck the spice of brunch. Fuck you, are you saying fuck you, FM? I mean, I know the two. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you look at your hole. I'll say more. Two wankers with a suitcase full of money. <laughs> <laughs> fuck God. Oh, boy, no, they tried, they, they, they tried everything. They tried everything. Did they, they go for your family? What? Did, did, did the British security, you see, like, with, with, with what they, they imprisoned me that, multiple times. But then they went for the family members. They started investigating them for well, tax. Yeah, finance. yeah, yeah. Well, well, I had I had no money, so the and my family had no money, and and I think the police knew, the security force knew his whole fucking family's not into what that says. Although they turned the house over a couple of times, yeah. which was wrong, and they told me. They says, and when they had me in Casaway, they says, we're going to turn your, we know your mommy and daddy's nice people, we're going to turn their fucking house over. I mean, if you do use of the bastards, because you're telling me you know they're nice people. But you're still going to do it. But you still do it. Get but you. thinking they would break me. Mm. Use every fucking weapon, every tool they have in the box to try and break them. Get them to turn the way the others turn. Not a chance in fucking hell. I read about, so you was in the maze where you're saying it was great. Yeah. It was good. It was okay. It was okay other than having your freedom lost. Then you get out and you get put back in and, and then they put you on a 24, 24 months solitary confinement. Right? Well, they put me in a, 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 a right, McGabry prison, but there's a girl's part in it. So they had to keep me away from the normal population for my safety and for someone else's safety. So I think it was, I'm not sure, because I tried to take it to court and all, and what, what didn't happen. It was Rule 24 or something, I think they, 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 they look, labelled it as. But anyway, they put me in the woman's prison on a block, a whole big cell, big prison wing, with nobody else in it, right? Only me, and about 20, 20 cells, and just deafening silence. Two screws behind the grill. What they had done, they had just opened my cell door. And day. when my dinners came, they went down to the farm and handed me my dinner and my breakfast then. 24 fucking months I spent in there. I didn't have a visit for a full year. Right? Tell, tell me how. My wife was diagnosed with cancer. A bad form of it. They wouldn't even handcuff me and take me to the hospital to see her. Nothing. But they thought, they believed, the British, the, I believe the powers that be felt, look, his life's turned upside down. Isolate the cunt here and he'll hang himself. It didn't. Well, 20, after 28 days of that treatment, because they done the same to me. I, I'd yeah, done yeah. five months then. Yeah. Exactly the same. Yeah. But in Belmarsh, I was I had my own unit, just me. Yeah. And then two prison officers. But for 30 minutes a day, they used to open the door and I'd walk around the little courtyard on my own yeah. and then go yeah. back in. But how did that? I only done, as I said, I always feel sorry for myself. And then I read yours yeah. and thought, 24 months. I'm facing two years now in jail for, yeah. like, for making yeah, a film yeah, called Silence, yeah, yeah. which will be served 12 months but of that Tommy, treatment. Tommy, you will be like, and you'll take it out and you listen to this and face, and you probably just, probably, it's happened till you and you're in. This is what got through me, that silence and that loneliness. I got letters, Tommy, believe it or not, from all over the world. Because yeah. I either like me, love me, or hate me. I was a public figure and people loved me. Mm. People hated me. My enemies despised me. The police despised me. The government despised me. Like yourself, Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Lots of people. But there's people out there who loved me and who liked me. And that, that's what got me through the, the loneliness. I got big, big fulls of mail every single day. Yeah, yeah. And I, that's what got me Sounds through really reading all them. And I always made up my business, Tommy. The, 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 if I got letters from no matter who it was, an old woman or a young wee fucking teenager girl or a wee young kid or nine or ten year old, I knew if they could spend an hour of their life to sit down and pen a letter to Johnny Adair who they don't even know, I owe them a that return to return the letter. And I always replied to every single letter except the hate mail. Got a couple of hate mail ones like. Did you? Yeah, but uh, but Tommy, I, got the that, <laughs> I hope you don't get the deal. But if you do, you 
you you'll be like me. Yeah, so oh, that's you, what I've done you, last time. You'll get more letters than I, I got. Read the mail. Just sat there reading mail. You, you get you, you'll, you'll just read the mail and that gets well. you through it. Because yeah. it's good. Because you know that there's somebody thinking about you. You're not alone, Tommy. You may be isolated down there, which you will be physically. But when you get all these letters, you're you're you're, you're saying yourself, look, I'm not alone. People's thinking about me. People's writing letters to me. That'll give you. Do you know what? Do you know what? Through me, when, with the letters I got, I thought my support base was a working class poor support yeah. base. When I got my letters, I was like, Jesus, man. Most of these are very educated. Most Tommy, of these are Tommy, doctors, you're absolutely right. teachers. You're absolutely right, because I can relate that. Even me, yeah. I just see me getting letters from police inspectors. Yeah, yeah, who were it. Johnny, please, what, trying to talk sense. And mm -hmm. letters from what? I remember getting a wee old age parent or something, a letter with five pounds in it. That melted my heart. Mm -hmm. A wee old age parent who probably had nothing yeah, yeah, yeah. sent me in five pounds. I'm thinking of you. I mean, uh, that policemen, Christian people, Chinese people, a Ameri American woman wanted to marry me. Some girl what from she South, like? South Carolina. She must have been a fucking nutcase. <laughs> she wanted to marry me. She hadn't even met me. <laughs> South Carolina. I mean, fuck. But I, I replied to every single one of them letters I got. Exactly. And that's that's what you do, Tommy. And that, because you'll get molt, you'll get fucking. When you when you got out after 24 months, so this is the thing for me, because it affected me. I've yeah. read you. Yeah. Like how, when you come out after 24 months of sitting in a room talking to no one, do you know yeah. the, yeah. the silence thing? Yeah. I remember then once I'd said been a week, then uh -huh. when I was speaking, I'm thinking, I haven't spoke for a week. Yeah, I know. I haven't spoken. I, know, I, know. I haven't had a conversation. Well, Tommy, well, Tommy, <laughs> see in my case, see what the screw's done. So I was complaining. I mean, like, uh, so what the boss done. Again, not the screws. I don't blame the screws, but the authorities. See, they expected me to hang myself. Yeah. I didn't do it because there was a, wee, a friend of mine's Prior to that, in the same place, hung himself in that jail. God rest his cotton socks. So what the cunts done when I was complaining, I mean, look, what are you fucking trying to do to me here? I says, look, I asked for a punch bag. Declined it. Nah, to, I mean, give me a skipping rope. No, you'll hang yourself. Everything I was asking for, they were, wasn't yeah. giving it. So they, they, they got a table tennis thing. No, t table yeah. tennis. But, but I was out in the canteen. He says, look, ah. Uh, We'll be able to get you your cell and get you in the canteen. There's nobody in the canteen. I, I, we'll get you a table tennis. Who the Bam fuck's going to gonna play with me? Who's going to play with me? They give you a table tennis on your own. Stand there like a hitter. And then they'll probably get the doctors that say, oh, his fucking head's away. <laughs> Saxon, I'm off. <laughs> table tennis with nobody to play. But that was them was playing main games. Yeah, 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 yeah. bastards. <laughs> but it never worked. Um, I, I hope not. <laughs> but that's the way it was. While all this is going on, you've said you had a missus. How many children? You, how many children? I had uh, three girls. Uh, sorry, two girls and a boy. I lost one of my son, two boys. I've, I've one boy now, and, and I've lost my son some years ago to fucking drugs. Uh, that was a sad time in my life too. He lived in Scotland with me. He came to Scotland and lived with me. When you left, how old was your son? Uh, he was, was, he, was, he was 33 now. He would have been what was that, four or five years ago. He's just late 20s. He died with heroin. He was in jail. And uh, a good looking big lad, a fit big lad. And, and just we got Scotland. Did he get on the heroin in jail? That, well, well, yeah, no, he came out apparently. He came out and he took it. And it was too hot. Must have been too strong or something. And he just, uh, I don't fucking know, but... It's Scotland, that's horrible for that heavy drugs. No. But probably Belfast is like that now, the stories are here. But at the time, Scotland, then you'd always think you can afford that because we were against all that. But if you're in, in the wrong place. Five years ago, you said. You're, you're wrong. When, yep. When you're in the wrong, the wrong, wrong crowd, obviously you'll curiosity yeah. kill the cat, they'll fucking try it. And, and that's what he'd done that took his fucking life. Sorry. Uh, man. No. So, you, so, so, so he, when you come out of jail, you come out of jail in Northern Ireland, I want to get back onto your son when we, you moved straight to Scotland. No, you yep. moved to Bolton. Yep, yep, yep. Why? No, I'll tell you what happened. She, <laughs> when I was, I was in jail in Northern Ireland. Yes, story. we were in jail. My life was living, my wife was living in Bolton. So she went out of jail. The cunts took me to the cell at five o'clock in the morning, right? Took me to an army, the, the, the army place with a, with a, with a big ar a helicopter. Put me in a helicopter and flew me to fucking Manchester. This Don't, is the peace agreements happened. Peace agreements agreement, but won't let me back. But you're there getting out of jail because so they think thinking. they think I'm coming out with like like an angry monster to go after the people that done what they done to my people. I mean, when my, you say, my own comrades. When you say there was a feud, it's because there was a lot of feud. So they flew me and uh, and a helicopter to Manchester. They brought me to police station Horridge. Obviously, the special branch came in, read me the red act. Right, Mr. Arthur, you're living here now, blah, blah, blah. You're not allowed to go back to Belfast. But more importantly, you're not allowed to go near Company C. That's what they call it. Not C, Company, Company C. I says, no problem, officer. Yes, no problem. 
Fucking next day, I was in fucking Belfast at one of the fucking instigators' doors, robbing his door at eight o'clock in the morning. Come out, you cardly bastard! He wouldn't come out. When you but say I one, caught it in camera. When you say one of the instigators, what was the one internal of the, feud? One of the rats that backstabbed me. When one, you was in jail? When I was in jail. You were yes, in jail? Yes. And on the outside? And this rat, uh, I hate to say it, he was one of my best mates. But like the rat he is, he's got his up and coming too. Nature's dealing with him too. But this rat, and I knew what I was going to do. I'll start at the fucking top and I'll chip my way down with these cons because I knew them. They're cardly bastards, each and every one of them. Well, so why, I knew. Why do you think they turned on you? Because, like, I've no doubt in my, in, in, in my, in my mind that the British intelligence had their hot fingerprints all over this. But for to make it work, they had to use some of their senior informants. And because it doesn't make sense to me why... Some of my closest friends, and I'm, I'm genuinely closest friends, turned to me for no reason at all. We never had an agreement, a disagreement. We never had a fallout. We never had a different opinion. We were all on the same page. Were you too famous and too influential? No, I was the, the British and I was too active. Well, you, I that's was, what, that's what I mean. I was among the British, the special branch and MI5. No, see if something happens to the Protestant people. Make no mistake, this small and that fucking go to a pub and get drunk and talk about doing something. This cunt about doing something and within ours. An army. And that's what they knew. They knew you need to cut the head of the chicken. And you cut the head of the, the snake, cut the head of the snake and the rest is going. So tell me, because I read other things saying that you went, you wanted, you were leading C Company and you wanted to lead all of them. That's a load of bollocks. I had no, look, listen, I was a UDA man, right? Of course I was. Other brigades, I had a great relationship with most brigades. But then again, you got to remember, there's informers within, and these informers was working against me, against other brigades. And I could honestly say, Mohan, in my heart, when these certain informers weren't around, I had a great relationship with other brigades. Every brigade, until these informers came back on the fold and then they started putting the mix in. There's no way I wanted to take over. I was one of the most powerful figures that, in that organization. Do you think, do you think that so why, why would I want to take over another area who were not active? Or who, do you know what I mean? It made no sense. We were, look, I'm going to say something. The, the UDA as a whole, 80% or 85% of all UFF operations came from Lower Shangel Sea Company. And I'm talking about the whole province. 85%. So that lets you know, that's sort of six brigades. And you must have high active with that Sea Company war. And massive influence. You must have carried an influence amongst all the others. Absolutely. And that's why we were so successful. Respect. Because people, I give the men that respect and in return, I give them and that. And I treated them like my own fucking family. And you get rewarded for that. People will love you. And and, 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 and that's why C Company was so successful. And that's why there were so many young people who wanted to be part of it. Because they knew this leader's for real. He's not an armchair general. He, he, he puts our interests first. And he hates Republicans. And he's fucking showing them that. And people wanted, good loyalist Protestant people, UDA men wanted to be part of that. And that's why fucking C Company was the strongest. And how do you, how, how do you feel then? With what you've gone through, with the leader you was, there's not many men who can lead the way you led. You yeah. Know, to rise up the way you rose up and to carry the weight yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel the level of betrayal to then sort of people try and force you out yeah. of the, well, the, the, well, the well, I know, I know, look, look, listen, we, the, the organizations don't run the organization. And I'm talking about all organizations. It's the powers to be. It's the powers to be who's run it. And they decide what happens and when it happens. And see, my, my, I've served my purpose over there. I was there. Maybe this was meant to be. There's no conflict now, and I'm glad. And I'm not glad that there's peace for our, our fucking grandchildren and, and, their, and, 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 and their children in years to come. But when I was there, there was a conflict, and I was central to that within our organization. I was the nerve center of, of UFF operations. Now, there's no more war over there, so there's no need for me. So maybe this was all done for a reason. And in life, I always believe in what's for you will not go by you. And sadly, there's better men than me. We just mentioned one of them a couple of minutes ago, the late great Billy Wright. There's better men than me, like UVF men, great UVF leaders and UDA men and LVF men who are six foot under, who never lived to see it. I've survived it. And I, I, I've come out on the other end. I've done my jail. I've, and more importantly, I can put my head in my pillow at night and never fucking put, the, never took the 30 pieces of silver from the British intelligence to betray my men. I could put my head in my pillow at night and, 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 and sleep safely. And knowing that I've, I've served my purpose, there's no need for me over there or not. I do I go to Belfast? Yes, I do go over. 
Do I wave a red flag when I'm over? No, I don't. But I'm just glad and I'm grateful that there's peace over there. What reception? And what reception do you get when you go out? Anyway, just what's your, if you're in Scotland, I got a good, good reception, a lot of respect because they're true, look, genuine loyalist people, and they see me as a loyalist hero and a loyalist legend. Yeah, yeah. I can't tell that. No, you, well, I get you are, all this fucking food is talking, and uh, yes, and I, I like that because it proves to me that less people, people appreciate what I had done well, and they're not like the backstabbers who put the boot in but these backstabbers were working to a different agenda there's no doubt about that so yes I, I find it quite ins- you must feel do you feel insulted by it no I, I, it feel, I, feel, I feel that's reality that, 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 that's the nature of the beast yeah. they, that, that, that's what happens it, it happens everywhere there, there, there's skullduggery within the British government there's skullduggery in the IRA there's skullduggery in loyalist power militaries and they'll try and bring people like me down but look at me now I'm alive I'm how, did, how, did, how, did, how did your life change so when you've left so you've left the, you've gone back to Northern Ireland then you've had to leave Northern Ireland you've gone to Bolton yep how much of a different life was it coming to Great to, Oh, uh, to Tommy, England? Tommy, it was just an amazing, phenomenal life, like a ni- life that I have now. Tommy, well, don't get me wrong. We thought the war was over. A guy got shot at the concert. But even here in Scotland, six years ago, there was five people who were caught that the MI5 and Spicer Branch had them under surveillance for 13 months, plotting to kill me and my best mate, God bless his cotton socks, big Scala. Pl- pl- plotting to kill me and Scala. They had them under surveillance for 13 months, but them, them idiots get fucking jailed. But that it shows, just, you, that it shows you the hatred they had when even in Scotland, and this cunt was from Ireland, that they were, and he claimed to be a dissident Republican, were wanting to kill me. Why, uh, uh, if they wanted to, would it be easier to go and get somebody in Belfast? But it just shows you how the, much of a hatred they had for, for me and Big Scala. But anyway, you're back to, back to the question you asked me. You no, know, life has been brilliant when you don't have the police arresting you. You don't have the police stopping you every day in life. You don't have gunmen coming after shooting at you. You don't have tackling onto your car for fucking bombs. And you know I mean, all these things are. Don't Did come. It's a someone, normal life, Tommy. Did and, and you see, the, 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 the one sport that I, I go to, football and all, I wasn't really a keen, but I go to the injured and salty games now. But my passion in life was boxing. And you could never in Belfast because it was a dominated Catholic sport. Although there was Protestant boxers, but it was more like a, a Catholic. I mean, so I, I, it was a no go for me. But see here, I could I couldn't believe my luck when I go to Glasgow, London, Manchester, match boxing fights, my heroes fighting and all. I couldn't believe it. So come and, watch Danny Christie tomorrow, me. Come and watch Danny Christie tomorrow. <laughs> I wonder if one of them come back leads. down the road. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wee bit extreme, man. Like, uh, uh, he's good and he's great. You know. <laughs> oh, fuck that! You'd feel them punches sitting <laughs> yeah, in the I'm audience, like, wouldn't you? They're over quick. Some of them. Like, they were we, we small gloves. Not mm, at all. Nah, Just nah. fuck that, no. Nah. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I prefer the 12 ounces or the 8 ounces. <laughs> but life change, life change and coming to England. Absolutely, and and it's just life. The way you go, like life just flies you by. I've got a wee boy at 12, and there's only me and him. He lives with me. Um, I've got kids in, down, down here in, 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 uh, in England, and I come and see them. And, and, uh, no, life's great. I have a lovely life. I train. I love my training. I do, you I, always train, do you? I've always. How no, I'll tell you what happened, Tom. Training. I went in the jail and I was 10 and a half stone, right? Never thought of fucking training. And I realized, well, you get 16 years. There's one or two things you can do here. I'm not the most educated person, but I'm streetways and culling as fuck, Tom, right? And money can't buy that. You learn that on the street. So I went to jail. I mean, now you can educate because the computer's not always in there. Or you can just train physics. So I... Up, opted to take the fucking the training and I swear I came out I came out fucking oh, no, 14 stone fucking solid muscle because I disciplined and dedicated myself mm. to it and ever since that I've, I've, even now at 60 I go to the gym I do the punch bag I run in the mornings I cycle I love training I love it how important do you think it is for a man uh, it's, uh, it's, I always say uh, uh, here's the way I look at it did you feel any a better? Fit did you body, wish you trained in the early years the way I look at it a fit body equals a fit brain yeah and, that, and both of them go together Mm. And I, that, that's why. And when I go to the gym, that's my. I, I call that my office. That's where everything happens. Because obviously, your, your your brain controls so everything in life. So when you're in there pumping iron, you're going like, oh, right, well, oh, uh, no, I love training. And to see if I miss it for a couple of days, it fucking it eats away at me. Yeah, I, so, I, I go, I go downhill. <laughs> no, no, no. Always keep training because it's it's brilliant for up there. It gives you mental strength, and 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 obviously it'll, it'll make you that wee bit healthier. Can I ask your opinion? 
The demographics are changing in Northern Ireland. Yep. The Protestant is decreasing. Yep. yep. The Catholics are increasing. Yep. Yep. You know? yep. In a democracy. Yep. What what would your view be if they end up with United Ireland through the democratic process? Well, uh, that's the Good Friday Agreement to uh, state. So that if the if the, the will of the people, the, if the majority of the people vote for United Ireland, they have to accept it. Now that's a better pill to swallow for me. I'm not over there, but I'm, I'm in touch constantly uh, with people from there, and I know it's gearing towards a, a, a place where. It never was when we were there. And I'm not saying a United Ireland. Slowly but surely, it probably is gearing in that direction. All the signals is there. But it's an environment now where people are getting on together. And this United Ireland thing, I, I don't think it's... I don't, I'm don't, not going to see it in my time if it happens. Yeah. I hope it doesn't happen for the wishes of the people over there, the Protestant, Ulster, Loyalist people. But I think over there... But when you're talking about Catholics and Protestants, it wouldn't be the same as the way it was when I was there, when that hatred and that blood and guts and mayhem was there. So it's a good place now. I mean, you have more children now going to these uh, integrated schools, yeah. which is which is a good thing. In my day, you didn't have anything like that. You're fucking segregated. And and you have Catholics living in, in Protestant areas, something that would never have happened when I was there. And I just don't mean because of me. I mean because... That that's that just wouldn't happen. So things is moving on at a, at a pace where things that we probably thought were important then that don't seem to be that important now. That's my opinion. But Ireland's changing, and so is Northern Ireland pretty yep. fast now with other immigration. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Was with that? other sorts of immigration. Immigration. I've done a documentary recently well, in the Republic of Ireland. I've seen it. Yeah, I've Looking seen at that. the influx of Islamic Absol immigration. That's bad for it. But in fairness to the Irish people, mm. they're making a stand, Tommy. Mm. They are making a stand. They're coming on the street and they're forcing it. But in my opinion, right throughout the United Kingdom and Northern Ireland, part of it too, because they're, they're they're suffering too. It's got out of hand, and the rat has uh, the, the damage is done, Tommy. It's not, uh, it, it's, it can't, I don't believe it can be fixed. It could have been addressed maybe 10 years ago, but it's just, it's, it, and when it's I getting ask, worse. When I, when I look at, because I, I always heard growing up in Luton, Luton is an Irish Catholic yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always heard about the IRA. And yeah. when we looked at what happened in Luton, everyone said it would never happen in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. The, the Republican yeah, army yeah, had never let yeah, it happen in Ireland. Yeah. And then yeah. I went to Ireland. And yep. I see women getting raped yep. daily yep. by yep. Yep. migrants who have yep. been bought in and busted in yep. with the help of Sinn Féin. Yep. <laughs> but, Sinn Féin are partly yep. to open but, borders but, but, Marxists, I'll tell you not why. nationalists. And, and on both sides, yeah. because it's all, piece, it's all to it's do all with money. money. Government will be paying them political parties like to Sinn Féin or Loyalists. Look, listen, see them migrants. We're going to let them live in that area. If you just leave them alone, there's so many million pounds. Yeah, which is what's happening. Because see in the Shangle, where I came yeah. from, there's fucking street loads of them. That would never have happened. Now, nah, nothing happens. And I think some of them stepped out of line. I think they were even involved in a rape. Now, nah, the paramilitaries on the show, and there's fuck all done about that. Yeah, so that tells me the fucking money was... Where, where, cause I keep see, it's all community government funding. And they're paying them. And so they're, they're, buying, they're buying them away from violence. So what, when it comes to the migrants, I have no doubt in my mind that they have both the, both the organisations have been paid a lot of money to turn a blind eye and let, let them live a peaceful life in your community. Because during, during the Troubles, were there... There wouldn't have been fucking there. Were there ever cases of Catholic men raping Protestant women? No, or Protestant men, no, 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 so women no, weren't no, targeted. No, 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 So I look at what's happening that now was, thinking, That was a rarity in Belfast. But in recent times, less than a year ago, I'm, I'm sure that there was a, a, a rape... And uh, and I'd see to be honest, I think it was a man. It was raped. It was from an the eight year old. It was an eight year old man, and the a man. And, and the paramilitary stepped in uh, to say, "Leave it." Well, they probably took money off and says, "Look, do it again and give me more money." The fucking bastards. Mm, with, with everything you experienced in Northern Ireland, and and the now now where we're at in the UK and Britain. What can Britain do to stop the sectarian violence that you've seen? You you've spoke about what it was like. Tommy, that's that, that's a valid question now because you see. What, what I could see in the foreseeable future, what happened to us over there, like like a conflict, but it was only going to end up over here with a conflict with the British people and the, and the, and the, and the foreign people. And, and that's where it is. Look, look, look what's happening. And then sadly, the numbers they have is phenomenal. Yeah, I come, you come down to this part of the, the place where you're from, Tommy, it's spot the white person, if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah. It's 50, spot, I'm, not, I'm not being racist it's, it's, here or anything. It's 50% Islamic. I'm, I'm being real. And, and, and these are the dominant force. These are the dominant people. To take control the streets. They control the drugs. And, and, and 
they control everything. And the the people like yourself and, and the Britain First who try to force, they're, 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 they're troddled on. They're, 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 the government's against them and everybody's against them. But Tommy, the, the answer to your question, I think it's, we're, it, it, it can't be prevented now, nah, it can only get worse. Because what's happened now and what is happening on a daily basis, you have illegal immigrants coming in and these people are coming in from countries where they don't know we the value of life. They yeah. don't know the value of life. They wouldn't think to, twice and walk up cut, raping an old age pensioner, cutting yeah. their throat and walking away. Well, they do. They, they're doing it. They're doing it. You're right. They're grooming. Look what they're doing. The place where you come from, yeah, yeah. what they're done with all them wee kids. Yeah, yeah. And then if somebody like you speaks out, you're fucking jailed. Mm. So that's... And they're scared to play it in case they play the race card. Oh, this is racist. Fucking terrible. And I was pleased and glad to see yourself and the hundreds and thousands of fucking uh, the British people going up to Sanatov last week in yeah. London because see for weeks it's been fucking all them other people yeah, fucking supporting fucking uh, and then they've done it the next the, day anyway the Palestinians the next but day. I was glad because I knew you're, I mean, look we, we've lost it we have lost it but I was proud to see fucking thousands of fucking yourself That's going up there and it, it was done in a dignified way but sadly the news came on they 82 people <laughs> do you understand <laughs> what I mean but that's their, that's your government it's and their police weapon. and See, exactly, Tell me so you, you know, no one's situation, mate. Mm -hmm. And I would hate to see the day, but it's, it'll come where the conflict we had over there, only we were smaller in numbers. And you're talking about millions here. They're fucking out, outnumbering you and outclassing you and outfucking. And it'll get to the stage where your backs will be to the wall and you'll have to stand up and be counted. And that'll mean fight for what you're fucking... You fought what for your country. You, exactly. And that's, that, 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 that's what I can see happen. Because it's just... A well, I think a lot of the British public, when in some questionnaires that I've seen in, in research, believe there'll be civil conflict eventually. Tom, that's what I'm saying. Tell you, of course there will. Because Islam has gone nowhere in the world. There's 45 countries where it goes, and when it dominates the numbers, it, there'll be conflict. And look at the dumb, now that we love, look, look, that we love Lee Rigby. Yeah, Come yeah. on up and cut the... Jesus, fuck. Mm. And our... Uh, and our, and our that's this is our country, Tom, you know what I mean? And and that these people are coming... They're not, and they can do that and think nothing of it. So could you picture fast forward another five years, years from that point? Years, yeah, no. What about um, Johnny? Looking back, if you look back now at your life, if you look about what you've, what, what about the royal family? Can I ask you about the royal family? What was your view on the royal family? Ah, well, were the, you the, were you a loyalist in the sense because many loyalists well, are well, the queen well, and country? Well, to be honest, like it's, she was our queen. Yep. He's now our king. Of sort, we're loyalists. We're Protestants, so we see them as that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? But as I, would, would you believe in all this monarchy stuff? No, no, it wasn't right and yet hundred percent the way most most people would be. But yes, that was our queen, and God, God bless the queen, and God save the queen and all oh, of the king. I love the queen, but I don't. He's not my king. Ah, uh, no. He's a World Economic Forum plant. Uh, I know, just I know. Like but you see, Tommy, the world's changing. Mm. And see, maybe, maybe, maybe Britain was a better time back in the Enoch Paul times. Mm. But that, that's probably before your time. But yeah. people like that, when, 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 but listen, you have to move with the times. And sadly and regrettably, that's what's happened. But there's things being forced on us that we're not happy with. But you know what? It gets to this stage now. There's fuck all we can do, Tommy. Or like yourself, you'll end up in fucking jail. Mm. So what do you do? You fucking keep quiet. Because the, they're the dominant force now all over and you can't, or the, the race cars play and you're racist and you're fucking banged up. Do you, and, do you regret anything, John? No, I, I, anything? No, Tommy, I've said this before publicly. I would be a hypocrite if I regret doing what I do. And I regret that, that there was a conflict and I regret that me and my comrades had to do what we'd done. But would I sit here and say, no, that was fucking wrong what we'd done? No, because I would be training my comrades because I was their Plus. leader. Do you understand what I mean? And if I was to say, no, that was wrong now, and then it wasn't fucking wrong then. So how could I say it now? I regret the fact that all them young men had to become involved to fight for their fucking country. I'm glad now that there's a never, hopefully, a never lost in peace. And I think and believe that there will be because the powers to be on top of things and they'll not let it go back to the way. Well, I think, I think the Irish people now see that the powers that be that govern them are not nationalists anyway. They don't give a shit about the Irish people either. They are, the Republic of Ireland are fully aware they're importing, they're replacing them right now. Their women ain't safe even now. Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin is in bed. Yep, Sinn, yep, Sinn yep. Féin is playing the loyalist because cast. Because they're, they're masters at it. They're see, see, they're proper, they're, they're, they're proper, they're, they're, they're proper on the war machine. It's yeah. fucking sagging the nun. And, 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 and sadly, 
Our politicians back home are fighting and arguing over things that's not more important. The important things is health, education, and things like that now. Right now, what people need now, especially at a time now where the cost of living is fucking sky high, and people are poor, and people in Northern Ireland and Belfast, they are poor people. You know what I mean? And these politicians are bickering over fucking things. It's not crucially important. The crucially important things now is health and fucking education yeah. for the kids and fucking and the poor. Look after the needy and not the greedy. Well, but there was one. There was one co comment attributed to, to yourself from a journalist. I think yeah. in your book. Yeah. Where he says. Um, the only good Catholic was a dead Catholic. No, that was a fucking joke. That was some, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, that was no, a joke. No, you're saying, say, oh, you say no, no, you're right. No, I, no, I, no, you're right. I've no. added that myself. When I'm no, <laughs> you know, she, I, no, I think, <laughs> no, she was, I, she, she was some fucking journalist and she was, she was winding me up and I was winding her up and she said, now, as if I ever had a Catholic in my car, that's a non-starter. So she the asked a silly room. question. She said, do you ever have a Catholic in your car? I said, oh, I did one in the boot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she was a headlines. I was a headlines. I was a headlines in the Guardian. Okay, okay fucking see. mad dog. Because in context, <laughs> when people get <laughs> no, to know you, they know your humour, your know. banter, you say exactly. things. Exactly. But oh, she didn't Jewish. know that. I said I was Jewish. But, but, the, me but the media okay, liked that. The media liked that. Yeah, and she had that quote. Okay, but they don't know Johnny's a witty cunt or a funny cunt. Yeah, yeah, or a, okay. You know what I mean? But she did that fucking headlines in the Guardian. <laughs> Fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah. Oh mate, Johnny, it's um, what's the future for you then? Ma Will you ever go back to Northern Ireland? Tell me, I go back when I need to go back. I've been back. But I only go if I need to go. But will I go back there to live? No, no. I'm happy, tell me, in my life where it is now. I have no hassle in my life. There's no, there's no, there's no war. And, and I hope that I would never, ever have to be involved in anything like that again. Because I had everyone tell me from Northern Ireland as well saying, listen, you do not want war. You don't, you, you need don't. To but stop listen, it. sometimes, Tommy, I, but the, the, the politicians have to stop it. Or people like you and me, we're the victims who come on the street and try to stop it illegally. Yeah. And then that's where you end up in jail. Or but but the politicians, they're they're the men who are supposed to be running our country and running it the right way. But if they let it run the way we don't want it to run, it's a fan inevitable that someday that we, our backs are to the wall. So we're going to have to stand up and be fucking counted. And that's one that's, thing. One thing I forgot to ask you: there. Am I right that someone was there a bomb put on your car? My house, you didn't get in the car? Right, really shit. My house was bombed, right? There was a bomb threw up my car, right? We were sitting doing vigilante duties at, at the peace lines because they used to come down. And I was just not long out of jail. So I was up, I was always on the ground, you see. So there was members of the UDA, I had them instructed, right, use guard this area in case they come down to try and rack these houses. So I would have had men on the ground all night. So I, I would go up and say, hi, all you lads, you just want anything to shop, you know, to make them feel good. So I'm sitting in the car with one of my right hand men, but the, I was close to a Catholic area, but they were driving up and they must have seen what fuckers are there in his car. So we're sitting talking away to the boys, the next thing, boom, about 15 minutes later, a fucking bomb. Now, I was sitting in my car, right? And there was another car beside us and we were talking to them. The bomb hit my window. It slid off my window and blew up hit, 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 the, the other car, but fell in the bonnet and blew up in the front of the bonnet. There was a bomb thrown up my house, right? This was during the fucking feud. And I heard the police and all, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. And I looked out, because I had bulletproof glass and you couldn't hear none, but they cut, they cut the loud speaker and I opened the door and I opened the fucking bulletproof one there. I mean, what is it? It was early in the morning. There's a bomb in your house. So I looked out the back and it, they threw the bomb over the roof, but it hit the garden shed. Yeah. And I knew there was no immediate damage because it was burning away. It was in flames and all like, mm. I would fucking close the window back at the bed. <laughs> Fire brigade and all came and put it out. So there was a bomb put the, a bomb threw up my house, a bomb threw up my car. My car was riddled with a fucking AK-47. My bodyguard was shot. And the British intelligence tried to shoot me outside my own door. Four, you heard of the 14th intelligence? No, go on. They, they, uh, they, they, they tried to, they shot my bodyguard. And he was he shot with me before the IRA spread my car, right? And he got out and run and had him in the leg <laughs> with an AK round. They just grazed me in the side. And then shortly after that, an undercover soldier, try, he lured me out of my house and he tried to shoot me. And again, my bodyguard was with me and he got shot three times out there. Why well, he took I, the bullets? He took, he had a brass chub cane in his leather jacket pocket, right? One of, one of them had him just, just in the groin, one round the groin, one in the pocket, and the racking that saved him because the, the chub key took the fucking brunt of it. 
three times he was had, and then he was shot on a separate occasion with me too. He was he was lucky. Then think how how am I still alive? I know how have I made? But Tommy, and you see the undercover soldier. They yeah. they sent him in to do me. They and then he was a professional because he was luring me towards him, right? But he wasn't, and I was shouting at him because I what the fuck are you at me at? He just kept walking. He wouldn't speak because he was English, Tommy. And he knew if, 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 if he You'd spoke an hour down his accent, he's undercover. He's a soldier, you know. So, but he just kept trying to lure me towards him. And then I was, I, Tommy, I was 15 feet behind him. My bodyguard was 30 feet behind me. And when, when I arranged, he, I was going after him and he was stopping. And then he was realizing I wasn't coming any further. So he's walking away to lure me behind him again. But then after a while, I clicked at me. This is a fucking trap. And then he seen the fear in my face and he knew I wasn't coming any closer. So he just swung around, boom, boom. He was no threat, just there to kill me. Boom, 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 boom. Fired 11 shots and my, I was <laughs> fucking 15 feet from Close him. To him. And my bodyguard was 30 feet and behind me and he was hit three times. Fuck that, that was fucking, that, that was close too. But again, they were, uh, that's what that's what happened. They, they sent him in the fucking, I believe that that because the IRA had tried to kill me, the NLA had t tried to kill me, not for the want to try. I think they just, were sitting there thinking, as he still, uh, uh, even no wonder they wanted you exiled. No wonder in the end, after all this, uh, the British intelligence would be saying, we've got to turn it. He's got to go. I know. And that's why they sent their own in, that, because they knew. And then, I, don't get me wrong, it was just to tell me something must have been looking out for me because yeah, that's what I, I, I see, see what I showed you in the car, in one of the attacks it was in AK. Every single round found my car, right? So the police took it. Then I got a couple of weeks in a forensic. And see, when I went to get it myself, it fucking frightened me because every round found that car. See, the, right at the windscreen, there's three bullets. Well, your mom, he had it in a single shot too. He knew what he was doing. So the three bullets go right up. At the, I'm a driver. But once my bodyguard told me, look, I just went right down. But he must have assumed that the first three shots had hit me in the head. And then my body had dropped. Okay. But I was on this stairway, Tommy. <laughs> but he thought I was dead. And every single round found that through the seat, that the headrest, right through where my heart would have been and all in the seat. But I was on that fucking stairway. On the door to him, I only got, cra I only got crazed in the side. But he thought I was dead. And on the way up the street in their getaway, he was hanging out the window of the AK <laughs> shouting. He was shouting out to the Protestant people, all, where the fuck's your Johnny out there now? He thought he'd killed me. And, the but he didn't. He you. and he got charged with it. A guy got charged with that. And he was an ex French Foreign Legion soldier. So he's a mercenary but, but, yeah, Well, no, Probably. no, he was IRA. Oh, he was but but he, beat, he beat it on appeal. He got sentenced to 18 years for trying to kill me. But on appeal, he beat it. He beat it. Mm. And then when, he was, in, when he was in court that day, members of C Company went into his house that night and killed his dog. <laughs> <laughs> Shot his dog. Uh, things like that. That's, that's what was happening. There were crazy things like that. But I'm just glad that it's all, that's all fucking, that you don't have to live like that now anymore. Don't get me wrong. I still do have my secure, security conscience because the, the Republicans would have a long memory with somebody yeah, like me. They're, they're always, so they would, and it would be easy to put a bomb under my car. So I always make sure I check that, you know. But the way I see, see things like that and that is, Tommy, big brother's watching you. See all CCTV and all. Because the last policeman shot a couple of months ago, or last, uh, last year, uh, the beginning of the year, I mean, it might have took a few months, but and then they got charges. Because what to do, they mightn't catch you doing it. You might get away with it. But once they troll all that CCTV for for for, for uh, fucking mails from, from where it happened, they eventually get the other car you used, what car you were taking away. It's too hard so uh, uh, see, that type of fucking... So that's another reason why I don't believe it'll go back to war over there again. Because it's too... It's too, the technology's too far advanced, Tommy. Yeah, they can, they, they can. Watch Whereas it. back in our day, there was hardly none of that. No. We were getting away with, you could just get away with murder. <laughs> get away with murder. Literally. Oh, yeah. I know. Fuck. Mm. But uh, that's the way it was then. But, but that's, I'm just glad that there's peace and I'm happy where I am now in my life. And that's, I just live the, the life to the, 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 the best of my ability. Me, my wee lad and my dog. <laughs> Well, Johnny, as I said, I'm, I'm glad I've met you. I'm yep. glad I read your story because yep. I thought I was committed to yep. my cause. Yep. And I thought I had trials and tribulations. And then yep. I started looking through yours and it made me think, well, I'm sound. <laughs> yeah. I ain't face, face nothing. No disrespect, but I would look at you as being madder than me. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you very much. Cheers, man. Thank, Thank you. Cheers. Thanks.
carry on watching for more interesting guests. I'll talk to anyone, I'll debate anyone, I'll hear anyone's story. If you want to help me along that way, it's not free, I need your support. If you can support my family, that gives me my peace of mind. It means I can continue to do the work I do. You can do so at www.supporttommy.com. I appreciate every bit of support, as do my children. It gives me the ability to fly them out here to see me so I can stay in constant contact with them. I'm de-platformed and I'm censored, so I need you. I need you to share this content. Make sure you stay tuned for upcoming weekly guests, interesting guests, exciting guests. I'm Tom Robson, and this has been my podcast, Silence.